Salama Benazulu Benako. Kembo, 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 Natata Nzambi, Yamanzulu. Welcome to another uh, episode. In this episode, I'm once again joined by um, Dr. Luya Luca. And uh, we're going to talk about Kisi, the Min Kisi, and uh, the Simbi. Dr. Luya Luca is, of course, uh, yeah, one that you already know. He has been here on this platform several times. We have discussed different things. And today we will continue our conversation. Dr. Luya Luca will bring us in a journey of Bukongo tradition. And, um, and we will talk about the Nkisi, as we said. Now, Dr. Luya Luca, for those who uh, don't know you, can you introduce yourself just uh, shortly? Yes, I'm Dr. I'm a theologian and especially an apologist. An apologist. I am the founder and manager of Nzila Loa. Nzila Loa is a modern school of African traditional initiation in Shatari Academy. It is based in Kinshasa and it is it comprises, it comprises two branches, a research branch called Institut de Sciences Animiques and an initiatory branch called also Nzila Loa. I've wrote, I've written about 50 publications, including 50 for publication, including 15 books. So that is a summary of my biography. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, great to have you, sir. And um, as always, the platform is yours. Yeah. Please um, take us into this beautiful journey as we're going to talk about the Nkisi and the Minkisi. Thank you so much, Nabi Kepa, for inviting me once again. And as you said, we are going to talk about Nkisi, Minkisi, and Simbi. In the year 1482, explorers from Portugal arrived at the mouth of the Congo River. There, they met one of the prosperous kingdoms of pre-colonial Africa, the Kingdom of Congo. Among their intents, was the desire to introduce their religion to the African people they met. Mm -hmm. Due to the difficulty of communication, the Africans had to ponder about the new concept brought by the white people, the concept of religion. After pondering for a while, the Congo people came to the conclusion that what the Europeans called religion is the equivalent of their own notion of Nkisi Nti, the local Nkisi. From then, from then on, this equivalence was adopted by the church. Thus, the in the first book published by the Westerners, using the Kikongo, a catechism written in Madeira, Portugal, in the 17th century, the church was named Nzo A Nkisi, or the house of Nkisi. Thus, the Bible was known as Nkanda Nkisi, the book of Nkisi. It is awkward for young people today to learn that the concept of Nkisi was perceived as the equivalent of the Western concept of religion. Because for them, Nkisi means nothing but fetish, which is wrong. Hence, the use of the word Nkisi in the Catechism reveals during the first two centuries, there has been a kind of cooperation between the Kingdom of Congo and the European superpowers of that time, Vatican, Portugal, and Spain. 
the Kingdom of Congo even exchanged ambassadors with these nation, these nations, including Brazil. History teaches us that the Westerners' greed for gold led finally to the Battle of Ambuila in 1665. Has the then Congo ruling king, Vitankanga, who would not let the Portuguese have access to his mines. However, this battle was not the only one that the black people had to fight. A fierce battle against the culture will finally ensue. Soon, the black will have to fight for the conservation of the true meaning of many concepts that would be demonized in an effort to intentionally distort the true import of African traditional religion. Among these demonized notions, we can cite the idea of Nkesi, Simbi, Kuya, Kindoki, Loka, etc. What then was the true meaning of the word Nkisi, which is today cornered to the denotation of fetish, something artificial? The Congo word Nkisi has two meanings. Nkisi alludes, first of all, to power. In this denotation, it becomes in the plural. Mi Nkisi. The second meaning of the word Nkisi is spirit. In this second denotation, it becomes in plural Bakisi. So we have the same word with two meanings the meaning power and the meaning spirit. We learn from these two meanings that for the Konga people, religion in its highest practice was the use of the divine spirits in order to develop one's divine power. We speak about religion in its highest articulation because we will see later that African traditional religion can be practiced at the divine level or at the human level. Therefore, the highest practice of religion among Africans involves the purification of thoughts, thanks to the divine spirits, in order to develop one's spiritual power. Let us explain this higher practice of our traditional religion through the use of the chemetic cosmological argument, which is a natural systematic theology. We can introduce this particular cosmological argument this way. From the individual entities it includes, we infer that our temporal universe is individual. The individual nature of our temporal universe implies that its creator is an individual being. In the infinite range of possibilities, the individual nature of this creator implies the existence of other creators that are at least potentially causative. They may have not yet created by the universe. That, that doesn't matter. Under the hypothesis that every creation exists in its creator, there is an entity that includes all the potential and effective creators. This entity is therefore the greatest possible being, the supreme 
being. The supreme being must be indivisible and immutable. Otherwise, there, might, there must be a principle of his divisibility and mutability, a principle greater than him, that is, greater than the greatest possible being, which is impossible. We know that each creator expresses an individuality included in the Most High. Now, the Most High is indivisible. Thus, each creator or each child of God expresses the fullness of God, the fullness of the Father, Mother, but in an individual manner. We call this fullness the Logos. So thus far, we have three kinds of entities, celestial entities. The Father, Mother, the, the, the Supreme Being, the Creators, manifest uh, potential and effective creators, and the Logos, which is the fullness of God manifested. To manifest his fullness in his children is an act of love. Thus, God express, ex expressing an infinite love to an infinite number of children must be love with uppercase L, the principle of love with lowercase L. Due to his immutability, God cannot deprive his child of the Logos. Thus, the father, mother, is eternally loyal to his children, expressing a quality of truth, that is, loyalty, to an infinite number of children, God must be truth with uppercase T, the principle of truth with lowercase T. Being truth and love, the God, the being truth, the love of God for his children cannot be forced. It is a true love. Thus, the children of God are eternally endowed with free will. It should be noted that these arguments, this cosmological argument, can be extended as to include all the essential doctrine of African traditional religion. Thus, we are clear that in its true nature, in its original nature, the African traditional religion is an exact science, a set of deductive coherent doctrines. This scientific nature of the African traditional religion has been a general fact in the time of ancient Egypt. And it has been kept intact in Congo religion, Bukongo. We learn from the Kemeti cosmological argument that God, the Most High, is absolutely immutable. And he has endowed his children with free will. Since God is indivisible, the bad use of free will, in other words, sin, causes the fall of the children of God. This fall is the loss of the manifest expression of the Logos, the divine power, the divine inquisi, the divine inquisi of you and me. Therefore, the higher practice of African traditional religion consists in the purification of thought, the opposite of sin, in order for all the human beings to regain the manifest expression of the Logos, the divine power, the divine pieces. They have lost since their original bad use of the free will. 
on the other hand, <laughs> we know that the power acquired through the purification of thoughts, the divine kissy, can be transmitted as a human power. Let me give an example here. Let us suppose that someone has developed the power of teleportation through the purification of thought. Generally, when an initiate reach this ability, he is very old. So his only ability to transmit this power is through human mystery. So he will take a piece of uh, a material thing and he will have a young man believe that the, the teledeportation is due to that thing and to the support of the holy ancestors. If he repeats this by teleporting himself and the young man, what will happen is that the faith will grow in the young man that that small thing and the works in him. And that will be a power, a divine power of teleportation transmitted as a human power of teleportation. The cult linked to the practice of the first power is divine, while the cult attached to the practice of the second power is human, because the second power can be used for good or for evil, while the first can be used only for good. So you, we have the divine practice of African traditional religion and the human practice of the same religion. Another example that can be given is this one. When Jesus says that blessed are the pure, the pure for all they shall see God, meaning that they shall see the holy ancestors. He is alluding to the divine practice of religion as allowing one to perceive the holy ancestors. But when in the witchy, a trend of African traditional religion found in Gabon, when in the witchy, one eats the bitter roots of a plant called iboga to get into a trance that may lead to a meeting with the ancestor. We conclude that the African traditional is practiced here at the human level. It is important to know this difference because the acme of the practice of African traditional religion is the development of the divine kisi, the divine power. Like the origin of human kisi is in the divine one, the, fin the finality of the human practice is its elevation to the divine practice. Thus, the failure to understand these two different practices of the African traditional religion may block the practice at the human level. The Congo teaches that the highest in Kisi is God himself, the most high. Mpungu Tulendo, or the Nkisi, the spirit, the power that embraces all authority. Mpungu and Nkisi are synonymous. This implies also that the highest manifestation of the Nkisi is the Logos. If we take all the children of God, around one of them, they constitute a collective child of God. And this collective child of God includes also the Logos. Thus, a double nature emerges here, where the Logos 
is the manifestation of the fullness of God in the child of God and around the child of God. The Logos is the manifestation of the fullness of the divinity in the child of God and around the child of God. According to this double nature of the Logos, then Kisi is in every individual, has the presence of the spirits of holy ancestors, standing has the inspiring inner presence of the Logos. Then Kisi is also around any one of us, has the protecting presence of Holy ancestor, holy ancestors standing for the surrounding protective love of the logos. It follows from what we have seen thus far that the Nkisi can be divine, human, or demonic. Since the highest Nkisi is God himself, it is anomalous to reduce the notion of Nkisi to a mere fetish, as the missionary did in an effort to demonize this common notion. Nkisi means something artificial, but God cannot be something artificial. Thus, we cannot reduce the meaning of Mpungu or Nkesi to fetish. However, we have seen that the Nkesi or his spirit can abide in an animate individual entities. Thus, we can speak of the Nzambi Nkesi or the Logos, the Muntu. Nkisi, that is the human being animated by a spirit, a divine spirit, by a human spirit, or by a demonic spirit. A Congo proverb says, Nkembo ankisi nganga kimoya. It means that we enjoy the moon to nkisi that is the power of a, the power of a mantra of enganga when that one is alive we enjoy the power of enganga the mantra kisi when this one is alive however if the enganga the expert is a dead one the maxim still stands, for it means now to enjoy the power developed by the said dead Nganga, we must believe that he is alive in the beyond. And this second explanation explains the use of libations and food offerings to the ancestors. It is an African expression of their knowing that the ancestors are alive. A spirit can be made to abide in a thing, in which case, we should speak of a kima nkisi, an empowered thing. The spirits abiding in a thing can be a divine one, like in the case of medicine, longo, or it can be an, an enslaved spirit, has a, a case that, he, that should be condemned. This case should be condemned. Debu Congo teaches that in the general rule, initiations were the means of fighting witchcraft. 
in society. Therefore, the use of witchcraft as a weapon of war was an exception, an exception, never the general rule. This implies that we Africans must avoid the use of witchcraft as a means of retaliation or defense against the attack of other black people. Such a practice led to the stagnation of the practice of religion at the level of the human. It is thus detrimental to the spiritual elevation of the community. In the same vein, we black people must avoid enslaving our fellows being for whatever reason. In what is called empowered think, that is a thing in which abide an enslaved spirit. The concept of Nkesi is not only found among the Congo people, it is the equivalent of the Igbo concept of Chi. The Igbo of Nigeria defines the Chi as meaning power and spirit, like for Nkesi. Moreover, the highest chi is God himself. Chuku, a contraction of chu, chi uku. Why the creator is called chi neke, all oh, the creative spirits. It must be added that like for the Nkisi, there is a chi abiding in every one of us. So you see, the concept of chi is the equivalent of the Congo. The Igbo concept, concept of chi is the equivalent of the Congo concept of Nkisi. Among the Yoruba of Nigeria, this notion is reduced to the concept of Asse. In the Vodun, Vodun of Benin, the concept of Nkisi is reduced to the notion of Asse and it becomes a malevolent or benevolent power. This implies that the Vodun is the practice of African traditional religion at the human level. Hence, the need of the elevation of the practice of the strength of the African traditional religion. This elevation of Vodou Badun should be achieved at two levels. First, the cessation of the use of witchcraft as a means of retaliation. This we have explained above. Secondly, the development of a divine Aze through the means of the purification of thought. This implies the achievement of a solely benevolent Aze. As we said above, the demonization of the Congo culture was not limited to the concept of Nkisi, but extended to other concepts, including that of Simbi, Kuya, etc. Thus, it is important to restore these two terms also, the true semantic value. In their true meaning, these concepts are the equivalent of the Christian notion of angels. The word simbi stems from the verb simba, to keep, to guard. Thus, in reality, the simbi is a guardian angel, a spirit in charge of the protection of a place in water as on the land. As for the term kuya, it stems from the verb kuya, which alludes to the act of gratifying. Thus, the kuya is not a demon, a table. The demon in Kikongo is table, but the kuya is in reality 
a spirit that provides the humans with goods. It was believed in ancient times, even, even now, that good can flow from the departed ancestors to those who are alive in this plane of existence. In summary, the meeting of the Congo people with the Portuguese was first characterized by the adoption of the concept of Nkisi as being the equivalent of the, the European's notion of religion. But later, the missionary embarked in a campaign of demonization of Congo culture that led them to corner the notion of Nkisi to the meaning of fetish, something artificial, which is wrong because the highest Nkisi is God. This perception is wrong because in Bukongo, the highest Nkisi is, is perceived as being God himself. Thus, the concept of Nkisi can be divine, human, or demonic. This concept is also found in our African culture because it is the equivalent of the Igbo concept of Chi. Among the concepts demonized, one may find also the concept of Simbi and Kuya that in reality allude to the protecting angels and to the gratifying one. Thank you so much. <clears throat> powerful, powerful. Now that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's something, uh, <laughs> Dr. Luca. Powerful, my goodness. How is it possible that our own people are rejecting this deep treasure of knowledge? I cannot understand it, but of course, Christianity, the history of colonization and Christianization, that plays a role. Okay, now based on uh, everything you said and made some notes, Yes. And uh, I hope everyone who just listen to the lecture of Dr. Luya Luca, that you get some glimpse of everything that he said, that you understood. If not, most of the thing he shared with us right now, you can read it also in the book called Bukongo. Yeah, so go ahead yes. and, um, and order it right now. And also... <clears throat> We will have a seminar 15 October with Dr. Luya Luca. Uh, the team will be Bukongo. So I'm inviting all of you to come and to join us in Geta. Yeah. Now, Dr. Luya Luca, um, you said that when in 1482, as the Portuguese were coming in, and we know, of course, Diego Cal was one of the the first who came to the Congo, they found Congo um, as a well-organized society, a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yes, And later, when the missionaries came, they called the church Nzo Ankisi. That's yes. interesting. I don't think that many people realize, yes, many Congolese uh, realize that the church was actually called Nzo Ankisi. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they associate Nkisi, the word Nkisi, to mean witchcraft yeah, or mm -hmm. fetish, which is yeah. something artificial. So they run away from it. But there are Bibles, ancient Bibles, uh, written in the Kikongo language, which is uh, the Bible is then called um, um, Kandanzambi, Kisi. You know, things like that are all familiar with the Bible, which the European translated for the Congo people. So mm -hmm. we have no reason to be afraid for the word Nkisi. Not at all. Yes? We have no reason to be afraid. 
Uh, the definition of Kisi meaning witchcraft is all made up. It's uh, nothing to do with witchcraft. Mm, okay. So Kisi is defined as power. Yeah, plural, Minkisi. Yes. And secondly, it's also defined spirit. Mm -hmm. And in the plural, it's Bankisi. Bakisi. Bakisi. Yeah. So when we uh, allude to Nkisi being spirit, the plural form of it will be Bakisi. Yes. Okay? And when we allude power, the plural will be Minkisi. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yes. That's interesting. So use of the divine spirit, one develops one's divine power. And yeah. With the divine spirit, you mean the divine Kisi, right? Yes, the divine Kisi expressed in us as the presence of the holy ancestors. The holy ancestors, when they abide in us, they are the Bakisi. Ooh. So when the holy when ancestors it, can abide in us as divine spirits? Yes, they are spirits. Mm -hmm. They are spirits. And the spirits abide in you. Remember once the disciple wanted to curse a village because they were not accepted there. And mm -hmm. Jesus told them, you don't know what, is, what spirits animates you. So spirits abide in us and animate us as they abide also around us and protect us. But they have two functions. The inspiring function, which coincides with the inner manifestation of the Lord as the presence of the fullness of God in us. And they can also be around us, the Holy Ancestor. They can also be around us, manifesting the the protective presence of the Logos is the manifestation of the fullness of God around us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can say that they, uh, the holy ancestors, they abide in us, around us, and working with the Logos, which is the manifestation of the presence. Representing the Logos. The Logos, yes, representing the Logos. Wow, yes. that is my goodness. So my because, holy ancestors, because because the logos is a celestial reality, mm -hmm. but it has a celestial reality. It is manifested at the temporal level, so it is manifested through the holy ancestors. Manifested through the holy ancestors. Now the logos is a Greek word. It means the, the logos word, is the a word. Greek word that means the word. That's why we explain it as the fullness of God manifested in each one of us. This fullness of God in Africa is expressed as the conjunction of the male and the female element. That is why every Congo Congo person calls his left part, his he left part, the, the female, and his right part, the mm. male. So each one is made of the female and the male. Now that conjunction of female and male means only the fullness of God, the Logos. Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the Apostle Paul speaks about the fullness of God. Uh, yes. In the book of uh, Ephesians 3, verse 19, yes. he says, um, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of God. And elsewhere, the Bible speaks of God has having in here the fullness of the divinity. That fullness yes. is what should be understood as the Christ. The Christ is different from Jesus. 
The mm-hmm. Christ is the Logos, the fullness of divinity abiding in us and also abiding around us. The Christ is the Logos, the fullness of the divinity abiding in us and around us. Yes, yes. Yes, people, I hope you're paying attention. Yeah, these are some uh, deep teachings. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, yes, in, in the book of uh, Colossians, it says that the fullness of God, the f- complete fullness abides in Christ. Yes. So it goes just in line with what you're saying. Yes, that is abides in Jesus as the highest manifestation of the Christ in his lifetime. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Now, we have the divine Kisi and the human Kisi. Yeah, so and we have the, the divine demonic. and the demonic. In the, in, exactly. And so when we practice the divine Kisi, yeah, one can, uh, uh, through the sanctification of his thought, Yes. One can gain divine powers. Yes. And those and divine wh- powers, when one gains those divine powers, as you said, it can be transmitted to others. Yes. Mm-hmm. How does mm-hmm. that work? Yeah, because it in the Bible, be, it can be. Yeah. In the Bible, there is a story of Moses, for example, right? Calling the yes. 70 elders. Mm-hmm. And then we are told this, uh, that a part of, of his Moses. spirit was yes. trans- imported or transmitted to the 70 elders. Yes. Is that, that what you're talking another, about? That is another phenomenon. I'm not, I'm not going, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about that phenomenon. Oh, the phenomenon oh, I'm on. talking about is the phenomenon I'm talking about is not in the Bible. Let me explain it again slowly. Mm. Actually. When one was initiated in Nyinde Kimpasi, which was the, the sacerdotal school, the school of the pro- formation of the prophets, he was sent there by his clan. The whole clan has to, has, had to contribute to send at least one person to such a school. So it means that his knowledge was an asset of the clan, of the family. Now, suppose some, that one through many purification, and, 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 and it, it took a long time, suppose through purification, he arrived to develop the power of teleportation. So he can be here, he disappear, he found himself in such another place. In order for him to transmit this power, he can do it through you, through divine means, which is purify someone, which will take him a long time. Because usually when, when he reaches this ability, he's very old. So he doesn't have time to do it through divine means. So he will do it through human means. He will take a piece of material and he will... A young, a young man, I, my power of teleportation is due to this material and due to the sacre of the illuminated ancestors. He will put strong ethical norms around this. And then finally, when he sees that the young man is respecting, is, is obedient to the ethical norms, he will tell him, okay, we are going to use the power, this power now. So he will recite a formula for the young man. He believes that it is the formula and the material thing and the ancestor who will be working. And they, they will find themselves in another place. Actually, they went to that place because the elder man used his divine power. But if he repeats this process many times, the faith will grow in the young man that that material works. So the elder 
will have transmitted his divine power to the young man as a, a human power. Now, the difference between both power is that the power of the elder is due to the purification of thought, while the power of the young man is due to faith in matter and in holy ancestors. Therefore, he can use it for good or evil purpose. But the evil purpose is forbidden. So you see, the divine kissy can be transmitted as a human kissy. Through faith. That explains, through faith, mm. that explains why those people who went for human initiation, civil or martial initiation, for the Lemba, the Kimhasi, for the Lemba, the Kimhimba, the Buelo, they will first start with divine mystery because divine mystery was the basis, was basic to all. Yes, was the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Foundational teaching. Okay, that's very interesting. Because uh, we we cannot escape the familiarity with the Bible, because even Paul said, "I long to see you, so that I may impart some special gifts in you to the working mm -hmm. of faith." And yeah. It's all through the working of faith. Yes, so yes. it goes in line with what you're saying. So uh, the divine kisi can be transmitted by using uh, earthly materials yeah, as, a, mm -hmm. as a means to help the young student to develop faith. And yes. through faith, he can tap into that dimension where that gift mm -hmm. can work. Yes, and it can be translated indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Very powerful. Um, okay. Now, you said uh, that the created temporal world, this universe, is uh, by an individual. Okay? And by that, we have the notion of many creators. So, yes. So, we're going back to uh, Baloa, right? Yes, we are going back to the, to the Baloa. Mm. All the, the Bible speaks about uh, the firstborns the firstborn inscribed too. in the heavens. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah, so the, the in universe. Hebrew chapter twelve, verse twenty-three. So we live in an individual universe. Yes, we live in an individual universe, and that includes the earth with its cosmos and this, its seven heavens. That constitutes a universe, and there are parallel universes to ours. And according to the Egyptian, when you dream, you go sometimes to other universes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to other universes. We're talking about the uh, multiverse. Yes, the multiverse. So the multiverse is a, is a real thing. Yes, it's a real thing. It's not fiction. The, no, it's not a fiction. It's not a fiction because the, the, the cosmological <laughs> argument demonstrates its existence. It was taught by the Egyptian Sheikh Antariop in his book Antériorité des Civilisations Negro Africaines speaks, uh, speaks about uh, this in the Egyptian teachings. So there were, according to them, many universes. And in the book, the tablets of Hermes, they speak about trips from here to other universes. Mm. So do we exist in those multiple universes? Is there a version of myself in each universe? I will say yes. You don't realize this, but yes. Let me give you an example. <laughs> when I have my dream, I have a dream. I can see you in my dream, but you are not conscious of being there. But you are there in my dream. And now you must remember that this universe is only a dream, a dream of the Most High. Why? Because all reality are included in God, and God is indivisible. 
So the visible universe is just an appearance. Reality is not in that appearance. So what we call the visible is just a dream. It's a dream. So what the creator is doing, he is awaking us little by little to get out of the dream, to get back, to awake, to get back to the reality. Mm -hmm. This material, material, visible universe is only a dream. Reality uh, is a spiritual. So he's awaking us so that we can be once again in sync with the true reality, which is spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Because, because reality, we have seen that God is indivisible. And God is reality. Therefore, reality is indivisible. Mm -hmm. Because reality is indivisible, it cannot be indivisible. So reality is visible. So the visible things is only an appearance, a mm -hmm. dream. Mm -hmm. And what the creator did, he put himself in that dream in order to help us awake. Now, the difference between him and us is that we got in this dream through the original bad use of our free will. So we have lost. We have lost the manifest expression of the Logos, the divine in Kisi. But he has gotten in this dream through love. So he didn't lose the manifest expression of the divine in Kisi, the Logos. So he could say, he could chase the darkness and help us take a temporal form and begin to rise to the level of reality. Wow. Mm, that's something else. Yeah. Now let me look at my notes. Um, yeah, it's truly a revelation that we yeah. live in a multi, yeah, in a multiverse. In a multiverse. In Christianity, many of us, all of us, shall I say, have been taught that there's just one reality. Yes, and that is this reality. And when you die, you go to heaven. But as you are saying, there exist multiple universes. Even when we dream, we travel. Yeah, we go yes, to, to, those, we visit, to those other. Yeah, we visit uh, other worlds, other universes. Yes. Yeah, and the Most High is waking us up so that we may uh, once again get in sync with the true reality, which mm -hmm. is spiritual. So when you yes. when you are awakened in that spiritual reality, I suppose you will have the power or the ability to move by your own free will through those different universes. Yes, of course. The more you are advancing, the more we are able to do that. The more we are able to do that, the more we advance spiritually. Mm -hmm. And that is what he explained in that experience. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember in the Bible, Paul said that he was elevated to the third heaven. Mm -hmm. While he was here, he could rise to a higher level. So the same way, he could also go to other planes mm -hmm. if, he, if he knew how. So the same concept... As we say, um, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yes, yes. So those heavenly places represent higher spheres of existence. Yes, higher experience of existence, like like Moses and Elijah appearing to Jesus mm -hmm. on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now you said something profoundly. You said. Um, Spirits can be made to abide in a thing. <laughs> yes, this is it? very, we should understand this, especially for our brothers who are in America. I had a letter from someone in America and he told me, I was very intrigued when I read your books. And he told me, 
I'm an initiate of Palo Monte, and fortunately, my master didn't teach me how to enslave people. Because by reading my book, she realized that that is a wrong practice. Okay. So it is a practice that exists. You sh we should understand that the use of witchcraft was an exception in case of war. In the now, now, when the black people found themselves in America, they were in a context of war against the white people. So they devised all kinds of means in order to fight against slavery. And one of the means they was using was the demonic kissy. The demonic kissy. That is, that is the enslaving of people in Nkisi in order for them to be used against the white people. But we should not be doing this against our own people. That's what I say. Enslaving people by the demonic kisi, you mean enslaving spirits of humans? Yes, I mean enslaving spirits of humans. When someone dies, before he dies, usually he goes through a transition. In that transition, by being here, he begins to see those people who are beyond. While he is here, he sees them. And when he dies, he keeps on seeing them. He keeps on being in the, in the, transition. In the transition. Yes. And that is why people will say to him, you that has died, tell to those who are there, tell them this, 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 because they know that he is still there. And he's hearing them because he is still in the transition. The transition. Mm. So, so beyond that transition, he will not anymore seeing people who are here. He must have a higher elevation for himself or for him to see again. That's what he is called come back. Not to come back physically, but spiritually, to elevate oneself in order to be able again to see those who those who you left. Now, in that period of transition, people must find his way and go to his family, which is in the beyond. Remember, the Bible says Isaac died and he was received by his people. Where? Mm -hmm. In the beyond. Mm -hmm. So if someone is not received, he may be erring, and that man can, that spirit can be captured mm -hmm. by the witch are here and use him in a fetish, a demonic fetish. Yeah. So that means we have the responsibility to pray when someone dies. We have the responsibility to pray for him to be received by those of ours who are in the beyond. Mm. This is very important. Okay. Okay. Wow. So when someone dies through our prayers, we can still help that person to be received. Yes, by we must. We must help that person. Mm -hmm. That is why, that is why the African people dances when someone dies. Why do they dance? They dance in order to call those who are there that someone is coming there. Someone is coming there. Don't let him be an erring spirit. Come, mm -hmm. come to, to accept him. Mm -hmm. But how long can a spirit be enslaved? As long as he doesn't find the way out. As long as he doesn't find the way out, as long as you and I don't liberate him, we have the possibility to liberate those who are enslaved. Mm -hmm. How? How? It is the same like when someone, when a, a young man is embarked in witchcraft. 
we can free him from that evil practice. We can do it by knowing that God is the only spirit controlling him. We can do it by knowing that he doesn't have a debt because enslavement always implies a debt. A debt. Whether they gave you money or not, once you are enslaved, mm -hmm. it means that you are indebted. For one who wants to free you, he must annul the debt. If he doesn't do that, he will not succeed. So we have to annul the debt, and we have to uh, free to, to, to call those who are hired to come and fetch that person. And we have to warn those who took him in slavery, to warn, to pray that God open their eyes, that they may know that what they are doing against that person is reacting against themselves. And they have no other option than to let him go. Hmm. If we pray that way, we can liberate the enslaved person. Okay. But what kind of debt are we talking about? Let, me, is let me give you an example. Let mm -hmm. me give you an example. Here. Yes. I was, I, I, I was, uh, someone came to me and he told me this story. Tell me, he told me, you know, my brother, my brother has died not a long ago. And now in, in, in dreams, I'm always seeing my brother, my brother asking me to do something for him doing this please please do something for me and he is in darkness and he said to me i know that you can do something for him because i know how you think you think i said yes i can do something for him so i prayed i prayed to understand that as a child of god no one added something in him and no one can take something away from him he is complete because he's the manifestation of the Logos. So he's not indebted to any person or to any system. I pray to know that those so-called witch who try to engage him know that the evil they do against him react against themselves. And they have, have no other option to release him or to die. So I maintain this truth. And later on, I met again with this man. He said, I've seen again my brother in a dream. And I've seen him walking in a light and going away. And that was the, the, the last time he saw him. He was afraid. Hmm. Hallelujah. So it, it made me wonder how many people are indebted and captured, you know, who are still waiting to be liberated. Many people, many people, many people, many people. This is, it is important for us African to know this. Slavery, slavery was not a visible, not, was not only a visible thing. Slavery was also an invisible thing. Our forefathers, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and all of them had, had, had fights. For to liberate us from, from the, the visible slavery. But we must work against the invisible slavery. It is still there. Mm -hmm. And it is more awful than the visible one. It's, it's more awful. Yes. More, more, more bad mm -hmm. than the visible slavery. How is that possible? How? Because those people should have been working for you, for your elevation. And because they are cut from you, they constitute a, 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 a zone of people who are working now against you instead of working for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are in a debased state. Mm -hmm. Take the example of Moses and Elijah. They were working for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But if, but if they were slave, they would not work for him. Mm -hmm. He will be cut from his ancestors. Yes, yes, yes. So do, That's do, why. 
we should work to, to liberate our ancestors. It's very, very important thing. Ingeta. Mm Matondo. -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Um, now, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, Acts 1, chapter, uh, Acts 1, verse 8, um, Jesus says, you shall receive power. Now, that word power is dunamis, and one of its definition is a power that abides in a thing. So well, that's actually the same as um, Kimankisi. Kimankisi. Uh, here, here it means the logos. You should receive power, the divine yeah. power. And when that divine power abides in you, mm. you become a power, a human power. You a become a human power. Yes, a human a human Muntu Nkisi. Muntu Nkisi. That is, that is an empowered human being. Mm. Muntu Nkisi. Yes, 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 yes. Now, let me add something here about mm -hmm. freeing the, the enslaved. We have that case in the Bible. And but we don't realize this. When Jesus died mm -hmm. during three for the three first days, mm -hmm. he was freeing his ancestors who were enslaved since mm -hmm. the time of Noah. Are you saying where the graves opened up? No, no, not the graves opened up. That was before the grave opened up. During the three days, according to Peter, during the three oh, according days, according to Peter. Yes. 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 During those three days, he mm. was working, yes. freeing yes. his ancestor who were in prison since the time of Noah. Which means who were in slavery since the time of Noah. In Geta. In so it means that those those people he could not save by being here. He could save them by. Uh, yes, it's it's actually in uh, in the book of Peter. Yeah, that we read mm -hmm. that he went in to uh, to deliver the captives, yeah, those who were imprisoned yes. spiritually. Yeah. yeah, since the time of Noah. Exactly, since the time of Noah. My goodness! So that okay. deals with the um, liberation the of captured spirits. Yes, liberation of spirits in slavery in, in slavery. It is something else, and spirituality is a uh, danger. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, we have a lot of we love we have a lot of job to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Of job. When we speak about the, the 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 liberation of Africa, we have to see all those dimensions. Mm -hmm. People see all people see all see only the political and the economic dimension. Mm -hmm. That there is so a spiritual dimension, exactly. Which is very deep, exactly. Whew. Now, okay, um, that was something. Uh, now, let me see. Simba, yeah? Simbi, stems yes. from Simba, which means to keep to guard. Yeah? Yes, notes are guarding angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They Let's protect see. they protect places in water or in the land. They protect places in the water or on land. Or on the land. And they are called simbi. Now I remember yes. when in scripture, of course, when uh, uh, Adam sinned, he was driven out of the garden uh -huh. of Eden. Uh -huh. And angels uh -huh. were placed to guard the entrance. Yes. yes, and those are the in, guardian angels. In Kikongo, we will call them Simbi. They are Simbi. Yes. Angels who guard territories on land, in water, also in the sky, in heaven. Uh, not in the sky. Yes, even in the sky, because in the sky you have places there. I haven't, I haven't been there. But I know that there are places there that you it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Be, be, uh, the, the Egyptian, the Egyptian say, say, did say that 
what is in heaven is like what is on earth, and mm. what is on earth is like what is in heaven. Mm. So we can surmise right. that, yes, of course, it's the yeah, same. Exactly. Yeah, so, sin be our angels. Yes. Yes, we of course. Places. Okay. Uh, love, truth, and free will are gifts mm -hmm. of the Most High to His children. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Eternal gift. Yes. Love, truth, and free will. Now, the Most High is love, He is truth, and through His love and through His truthfulness, He gave free will as eternal gift to His children. Now, these have another implication mm -hmm. because, because God gave his children free will. Mm -hmm. It means that evil exists in yes. heaven, but that evil is only potential. potential. It is not manifest. Mm -hmm. So by, by bad using the free will, mm -hmm. human beings made evil go from the potential state to the manifest state. So they are the one who are responsible for see, for evil, not God. Not God, but not we, God. the children. Yes, the children of God because, are responsible for evil because they are the one who made evil go from potential states mm -hmm. to, manifest. to manifest states. So mm -hmm. they created evil. Creation in in in, in the West. Creation means going from nothingness to yes. existence yes. that is their perception of things in the african perception of things creation means going from potential states to, to manifest, manifest states, states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Geta. so because the children of god possess the free will uh, evil exists potentially and it can yes. manifest through them. And that's the reason we need to practice um, the purification of thought, right? In order to regain to our lost manifestation evil, of the lambas. Yes, to remove the evil and to regain the divine manifold Kisi in us and through yes. us. Yes? Yes. And and as the yes. holy ancestors, and around us, in us, and around us, and around us, also symbolized yes. by the holy ancestors who are in us as empowerment spirits, and around us as a shield. Yes, Man. and that work also is salvation. The surrounding presence mm -hmm. of the logos breaks the power of sin, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. But it is up to man to use the inner mm -hmm. presence of the Logos mm -hmm. in order to sanctify himself. So salvation is by grace, which is the surrounding presence of the Logos, but it is also by sanctification because you are free. Mm -hmm. Salvation is through sanctification, which is the purification of one's thought by which you regain the divine kisi, your so your divinity. So salvation is yeah. not in believing Jesus and everything is done. No. no. Jesus, was, Jesus was teaching something to believe in yeah. Jesus, mm -hmm. to put in practice what he was teaching. Mm -hmm. And he was teaching what? He was teaching you, the presence of the logos around you and in you. If you believe this, mm -hmm. and if you let this power transform you, then you will be saved. Jesus said, the mysteries of the kingdom is given to you. So through mm -hmm. the practice of those mysteries, which are truth, right? Yes. Yes. You will save yourself. Yes. Yes. Through yes. the practice of that given mystery. But you save yourself through the practice. Yes, of those mysteries. We yes. save ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because in church we have learned, just believe in Jesus and everything is done. You're going to heaven. But you have no, to practice. No. 
Yes, you have, you have to practice. Yes. If it were the case, uh, then everybody will uh, will have already be, been saved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you have. No, to it's not the case. The divine mystery. Okay. You well, have to practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see if I have something else. So by that, by that we have to develop the divine key seat. And by yes, developing it, we save ourselves, and our and salvation mm -hmm. is actually restoration, right? Because we are regaining yes. the divinity which we lost. Okay. So salvation is restoration through the practice yes. of the mysteries. Yes, our truth. Um yeah, I think I have all my questions. Yeah, just a chi from the Igbo is the equivalent of in Kisi. All right? So for all our Igbo Please? brothers and sisters out there, chi is the equivalent yes. of in Kisi. Yes, among the Same Igbo thing. people, we have the notion of the chi. And the chi is defined as being power and spirit. Yes. So it is the same. And the highest chi is God himself, Chuhuku, which is a contraction of Chihuku. Chuku. Yes. Kembo and Kisinganga Kimoya. That is a powerful citation. Kembo and Kisinganga Kimoya. We enjoy the power of Nganga, an expert, when he is alive with us. Because as I'm alive with you, you can call me and I will share and will be enjoying my knowledge. But when I'm dead, the maxim still stands and it means to enjoy my power while I'm in the beyond. You must believe that I'm alive. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> hey. Him. And that's the, that's why the, the libation and food offerings were made mm. to the ancestors. That's it is the in reason. order to explain our conviction that they yes. are alive. For the communion. Yes. Spiritual communion. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, what you said is very powerful. Um, because in mm. scripture, I think uh, 11, it said, Whosoever comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of everyone who seeks after him, who fervently seek after him. It's the same. Yes. So as you believe no, no. in the Ganga, being alive. No, the word God there means the holy ancestors. The holy ancestors. Yes. As you believe mm -hmm. that they exist, that they yes. are alive, you can enjoy their fellowship. Yes. Yeah, that's powerful, eh? That's uh, that's powerful. So the more I learn, the more I grow, the more I realize that the Bible is actually stolen African Bukongo spirituality because it contains so and much. That, yeah, it contains so much. That's what, the things that, that you teach that. only coded. Yeah, in the Bible, you know, it's like yes. coded in there, so that we don't we we don't have so we don't have to reject the Bible. It is a very big mistake because mm. that those teaching was taken from us. Yes, we don't have to reject them, and that's we one of the reasons we read the Bible mm -hmm. from our culture. Yes, yes, we have to read it from our culture. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, maybe one of the yes. reasons Kim, the great Kimbangu said, yeah, um, read the Bible, because by doing so, you will catch the thief with the object which you stole. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Okay. I think uh, I had all my questions. It was a wonderful session, eye-opening, revealing. And I hope all of you have learned something. You know? um, remember, 15th of October, we will have a seminar with Dr. Luya Luca. You can um, register 
now for the seminar. Yes, we have a place for 100 people. So make sure to register today and to save your spot. Dr. Luya Luca will be there. And as you, if you have enjoyed today's seminar, you know, it is just here on YouTube for you. You will definitely enjoy being in a live class with Dr. Luya Luca, where you can ask questions, you know. So yes. we're inviting all of you to come and to be part of the seminar. The team is Ubu Congo. Dr. Luya Luca, Matondo, Matondo, may Tatanzan continue to bless you. The your holy ancestors continue to surround you and empower you as you are opening our eyes so that we can understand the true religion of our ancestors, which is Bukongo and the continuation of the mystery schools of our ancestors, which was known in Egypt. Now, Matondo, people, thank you for, for watching, being part of this episode. May Tatanzambe bless you, of course, also, and the holy ancestors surround you always. Ingeta.